Well, I've got an idea. We could check out a video that ranks the five best and worst Marvel films. Does that sound interesting to you guys? Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, I don't know. It it might be. Who? It depends on is this, who's it by. Is this, is this who? One who... <laughs> oh no! Actually, I don't want to spoil anything. Well, it's what? it's from someone you all know very well. <laughs> it's spoiled. It's who? a famous lad oh, who right. we cover every once in a while. Oh, oh! Da, 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 da. Oh Already my functioned. god! Yeah. Oh no! Oh, oh my wow. goodness! <laughs> Man, I can't. You know what? I can't wait. I cannot wait for this. Yes. I'm so excited. And you just can't ben, hide it. Ben, tell me, tell me what the movies are. <laughs> I want to know his picks. So, uh, yes, well, if... especially as an aspiring screenwriter himself, like, oh yeah, I'd be very curious. I can't wait Marvel for movies. Daddy Ben to tell me how I should feel about movies. I want some insights. Yeah. That is the watch together link. If anyone hasn't already generally joined. like good because oh, I've not really watched them ever. In fact, I've avoided them He's deliberately. A weird is he mixed bag of stuff? Which ones? You never know what you'll quite get from him. We've covered yeah, him, I think, two time. or three times. We watched him play Minecraft. So. Remember? Yeah, we did. It was, was kind of lame. Was well, well, no, it was Ben's was kind of lame. The other, well, no, uh, it was the Five Nights at Freddy's Matt, one that Matt was lame. Walsh, right? Yeah, Matt Walsh was the boring one. one. Yeah, that was, was really the one. Boring. Okay, yeah, yeah. Ben was all right. He had a bit of a curator walk him through the experience. Like, uh, they yeah, they no, should have better. Ben's a bit of a. You don't quite know what to expect. There are a lot of people where it's like, yeah, I know exactly. Oh yeah, what we you're gonna say. He with, ranked Star Wars, didn't he? Movie. And he put Rise of Skywalker like really high because he said it yeah, undid it, TLJ. And ain't that just fascinating? <laughs> yeah, it's just interesting. <laughs> and interesting is is valuable in a sense. Interesting <laughs> like, is valuable. Like, That's one word for me, it. If you Agreed. ask me what are, what are his favorite Marvel movies, I'd be like, I actually have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah, shall we guess? Can, can we guess and then like tally it up? I feel like that sounds I have... pretty interesting. Because hmm. I, I bet we I could bet... simplify it by uh, just guessing his top one. That yeah, might just the top streamline one. it. Oh, yeah, I, I agree America, with that. The first, the, the first one, Captain America one, I think will be his his favorite. Mm. That was going to be my guess as well, but like I wasn't sure how much he would change it up in order to not be predictable like that. Because I would have assumed he would pick Captain America the first one for mm -hmm. reasons. But That's then, like, is he going to not do that in order that we can't say I told you so? Uh, I mean, it could just be that he picks Avengers, the first one. You know, oh, yeah. the Avengers. It's a safe, a safe. I think uh, that's uh. Yeah, I think that's a pretty safe pick. But you yeah. never know. Benjamin uh Benjamin Shapiro Steen is he's Well, wouldn't it wouldn't it be really surprising if he was like, you know, my favorite one was Eternals. That was a really profound, brilliant <laughs> <laughs> Now that would shock me. I would say someone has so, so I, stolen I your think, mind. I think the the most important thing is when was Ben Shapiro officially aware of the MCU? That would be that would probably requ be required knowledge for mm. us to determine. I don't know if that's going to be a part of it. I don't know if he leave us a little bit of backstory. Uh, for reference, this is twelve and a half minutes, and he's going to cover ten movies ranked five best, five worst. And I don't know yeah, what I'm more sure. interested in: the five best. He or five does worst. speak very quickly, though. He does. Um, probably the five that. best, because <laughs> I think I think especially lately. The five worst will probably be ones we expect. Yeah, like the, maybe there'll be uh, some like wild cards. Marvel, Miss Marvel, or, or like the Marvels Marvel or something. The last one. Yeah, yeah, when was yeah. when did this video come out? That's actually that's important. Oh, uh, let's have a look. Because because we if we're guessing things from after the 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 video came out, that kind Alrighty, of is, folks, that, today that we're gonna that. two weeks ago. So, so damn. Oh, okay. Oh, then then oh, everything's oh, everything's oh, on the table. Right? Hold off the presses. It's gonna be extra spicy. It might. I, I do don't think so. Because remember, he's like a really conservative. I could see him uh, not liking like Deadpool more like Conservative much. view. It might mm. be too crass for his taste. Oh, that's. I do that's also have a wild card for everybody. How many adverts does he slip in between these? Like, is it one in every one? one Probably one. just one. I think one. Just the one, right? Yeah. I don't even want for... I could be wrong though. Well, I don't know. Menorahs are us. I don't he, know. Exactly. He's, I, it, he, he's really good at slipping in his, his adverts and uh, like almost seamlessly. Sometimes you don't even realize it's an advert until halfway Ooh. through it. Are you saying he's a crafty salesman? Why would you say that? I, yeah. I might be saying such. Welcome. That's Shad. interesting. Hi. How you doing? Oh, we're, we're about to cover the, the top five <laughs> and worst, best and worst Marvel movies according to Ben Shapiro. 
Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> mm. I, I'm, I'm expecting a very informed, educated, uh, objective opinion. That's why that it's going to be interesting, because it's going to be it could be wacky. <laughs> like, we have no idea what it's going to be. I have a feeling that he'll be... He'll be, like, half right and half wrong? Do you th okay, here's a the question, Rags. Obviously, do you this think, is his favorite. Right? Do you think you'll be surprised by any of the decisions here? I'll be surprised by two of them. Two of them, okay. I think two of them will surprise me. You know but what? I, think, I, think I don't think I'll be that surprised. That. And I would Matt, say it I, might I, even be five of them. Ooh. Alrighty. I, I think it's going to be chalk the whole way down. I have a feeling it's just going to be the greatest hits of ones that all people on his side you know, say are good. No, he'll always <laughs> throw in some weird opinion. He's got a lot of weird opinions. Yeah, he'll try. Uh, even on his Star Wars stuff, I can't remember specifics, but that was an interesting video. He had some odd takes oh, yeah. on that. Oh, yeah. He's got some takes. He's got some I odd think like maybe. Skywalker? The man did is... he like Rise of Skywalker? He did. He liked it. <laughs> yeah. He's a, <laughs> he's what I mean. a bit of a, a wild card. He also he's... likes Batman v Superman a lot, if I remember correctly. Aw. The mm. man is the drummer to which other people follow the beat of and strange him. yeah what he so, said yeah yeah mm -hmm. so we can uh, english well here let me use let me use the loo real quick and uh, i'll be right I back think... and we can delve into it thank you for announcing it show. we appreciate it he manages to always do it right when the conversation ends <laughs> <laughs> well you know that way we get a nice lull he's got a talent for that i think maybe shockingly high on his list of best will be something like dr strange that's my prediction because his wife's a doctor. Mm. Does he know that his wife is a doctor? It's definitely Captain America. Yes. Now, I have a feeling he's going to say something that Doctor Strange is representative of the border crisis and stuff. So I, I think that's going to be low on his list. <laughs> I, I just, I can what foresee him saying something like that. red skulled Nazis who are crawling across the border as we speak. And I'm trying, trying, struggling to see the link. No, I said, do I said, I meant Doctor Strange. Oh. I said the wrong one. Wait, so are we waiting for Rax because what? Is he gone, disappeared to. Yeah, I'm, I'm saying, uh, I, uh, Platoon, I was saying that he's going to, uh, when he, if he does mention uh, Multiverse of Madness, it's going to be uh, about how it's uh, it's an analogy or a uh, allusion to the, the uh, border anal crisis. Anal. I think it would be pleasantly surprising if he, like, he names that as a bad movie and gives actual good, legitimate criticisms. Maybe he's stolen some points from all this video on it. That would be fun. <gasps> he would be a watcher of my videos, wouldn't he, Shapiro? Absolutely. He's got to be on there. Well, you are part of the alt-right pipeline, I'm told, so it, like, it would explain a lot. But how 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 close you have to be to you have to be within your vicinity, right? You watch every like three steps in front and behind you is everyone in the pipeline. So I don't know if I'm close enough to him. Gotta hope so. Well, today we're gonna rank Sorry, the best long? and worst Mar. Yep. Oh, we're we going. Are we starting or no? Or not? Oh, you, were you gonna ask how long we're we gonna wait? <laughs> No, no, no. Well, well, I was going to ask how long you guys have been going already, and also that it's great to be here, great to hang out with all yeah. the great chaps as well. Uh, hung out with some of you before already, uh, and so... Yeah, for I, those who I, don't I like know... You all. This is a good gather. We did a bunch of uh, EFA... Not EFA... Uh, Nerdrotic streams, talking about House the Dragon. Right, House the Dragon. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. It was good. Sorry. <laughs> I know, uh, sorry. <laughs> I did. Uh, I did check out your uh, House of the Dragon. <laughs> your channel's thoughts on it as well, uh, Shad Night's Watch. What did you? What did you? How are you on that last episode? That that uh, Allison oh. and Rhaenyra scene. Well, we I'm did not... the stream together talking. Oh yeah. About it and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, yeah. Oh, well, what a letdown, hey? Um, a little bit. To total blue balls, and that last scene was just retarded. You know, it's more of a letdown. It's more of a letdown to the fucking record. Four hour plus conversation on it, and then the uh, audio is useless because one of your microphones <laughs> wasn't picked up. That's that's always great. Yeah! <laughs> oh, that, oh man, I'm oh. kicking the balls. That oh, that sucks. Re recorded, that re everything's good to go. You guys that will get that conversation well. soon after the anniversary. Don't you worry, it's on the way. Because wow. a lot of people think it's like, did but you just not cover those last two episodes? Like, nope, it's done. It's on the way, I swear. <laughs> Uh, but overall, House of the Dragon season two, I really liked. It's just that last episode yeah. is just uh, a bit unfortunate. Also, Rags, you back? Yes, I am. Yes, let us, let us, I am. Let us do it. Let us zoom into Ben. All right, folks. Today we're going to rank Whoa. the best and worst Marvel Yo. movies of all time. Yes. This video is sponsored by PDS Dev. Number one. Does that count? <laughs> <laughs>
Yes, no, the town. It's <laughs> gonna be. One. I thought I thought you later. were talking about like actual ads. You know, like ad okay, rate, fine, yeah. fine. I'll, I'll let it go. I'll let it go. That doesn't count. Okay, folks, as we go through this journey through the Marvel movies, we have one person who knows much about Marvel movies. That, of course, would be Phil, who's wearing hey, a Phil. show. Hey, Phil. Superman's my favorite oh, hi, Marvel. Phil. Oh, man. <laughs> and, uh, and, and we also have Sarah, who doesn't even know what Marvel is or what comics are and is in the video. <laughs> she's a girl. A that no, girl's stinky. No one can really figure <laughs> out, actually. I'm so happy to be here, everybody. <laughs> hey, everyone. The Marvel Her body movies, language says otherwise. I will admit that they are not my cup of tea which means that my, my feelings about the Marvel movies are, tend to be more in the middle. Well, I think someone okay. that makes me more interested to get his opinion because kind of. they're not his cup of tea. I mm -hmm. want to get that kind of perspective. Let's get outside. I thought that was enjoyable. And then the minute I leave the theater, I don't remember a single thing about the movie. Oh, he's the prime audience. Oh, man. I, and I fucking envy <laughs> you. Those are the design <laughs> shows for yeah. target audience. <laughs> 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 Finally, we can <laughs> listen to the <laughs> target <laughs> audience. Yeah that I just watched. It also means that the movies I tend to like from Marvel are the ones that are lighter and funnier. But today, we're going to do mm. my top five Marvel movies oh, and also oh, the bottom shit. five. You know what? If he said that, I wonder if Ant-Man, if one of the Ant-Man films is going to surprise oh, man. Mm. one side you get on that top five. No, also, that, Guardians of the Galaxy ooh, as well. Does that change things? Yeah, Guardians of the Galaxy 1, maybe. Also, we've, we've already gotten... Uh, any... Ooh, yeah. We've, we've gotten two comments about pausing him too much. Welcome to EFAP. If you're not familiar, we pause the shit out of everybody. <laughs> this is what we do. If it you want to watch, if you, you want to watch, yeah. watch the video, Ben's <laughs> video, you can just go and watch the video. If you're not here for us, it is well, our <laughs> podcast. So I mean, we would hope that it's their you special would be day. Here for, yeah, yeah, it's all right. Just, I would just like to know what they think EFAP stands for if they're every frame a actually... friends spelt with a ph. <laughs> every uh -huh. Ben a Shapiro. <laughs> Marvel movies. So these are not necessarily in order, but here are my top oh, five does... Marvel movies. Wait, they're oh. not in. Oh, oh come on, oh, Ben. So okay, oh, so they're not oh, top you can five. At least top... rank them. Yeah, so we've the got a bunch one. of the best five and a bunch of the... These are the best five, but they're not in any particular order. That's why do you do it like that? That's confusing. Number one is the original. Oh, well, maybe. Uh... But Iron Man, that's not a surprise. Uh, Iron Man's in a lot of people's top fives. One. Yeah. Yeah, so the original Iron, Iron Man was really, really great. Obviously, Robert Downey Jr., who revivified his career on the back of revivified. this. And Jeff Bridges and yeah, Paltrow. Yeah, word was it's that? excellent. It, it it's is a real word, revivified. Elon Musk revivified. wearing a suit, flying around, being libertarian. Um. <laughs> <laughs> that is reasons why it's good. <laughs> the man likes his films, okay? Oh my god. Uh, that's great. And it's great. I love it. I am Iron Man. Keep it up, That's great. Like, the message of right. the film is about how... No one's gonna have any issue with choosing a dialogue. Good stuff. Business is better than government. That is what the, the movie's about. Literally, the end of yeah, the Yeah, that was the core. That was definitely the core. That was everyone. <laughs> I thought he was gonna yeah, talk. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was the guy, this, the guy, this is the government conservative fella. <laughs> still, yeah, still I, me. I thought he was going to talk. This about is the still Ben Shapiro. <laughs> <laughs> it is Ben Shapiro. <laughs> I, I, I do recall a 19-year-old dark hour walking out of the theater and being like, "Ah, yes, capitalism was all that." Iron Man, it's the movie that turned me into the deeply, oh, deeply conservative right. dog I am today. Does this mean that uh does this mean that Civil War is definitely gonna be on his worst Marvel movies? It, That's that, got me thinking too. It could yeah, be, yeah, because oh, clearly he sees yeah. Iron Man a particular way. Losing faith in institutions. Yeah, yeah. So you might you might pop it on there. <laughs> Dude, Congress you know, and being like, no, what's, I'm not um, What's interesting well, about wait. his take there is it's more, technically more accurate to the second film where he literally says, I have privatized world peace, where he's saying the private but, industry can actually do a better job in keeping the world safe than the government. But the, again, that's the second film. I don't... I'm, I'm, well, I'm but, but remember what happens in the second film. Exactly. Like, that's the beginning part of the second mm -hmm. film. What happens later, where he yeah, allows Rhodey... Yeah, the evil... <laughs> remember, yeah. remember, it's made pretty clear he allows Rhodey to get away with an Iron Man suit, and he knew that would lead to the... Uh, like American government having access to it, like he wanted that to happen somewhat because he yeah, realized he was no yeah. longer the best person in charge for it. Which is it's, it's a gradual arc of the MCU that I think a lot of people don't appreciate is that uh, Tony comes to understand that he should not be the only one in charge of such great power. But it's more complicated as a question than okay, everybody. It's like whoa, 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 whoa. 
you know. And you know what? I guess to Ben's credit, um, the first film does have him stepping in and resolving a, oh, well, I mean, taking care of the terrorists where the government was at a standstill. And so I guess, yeah, all right, maybe. But it was also his, it was also the fault of Stark Industries. Exactly, yeah. hmm. But he's not pro vigilante justice. And nowadays, modern conservatives are a lot more um, picky about institutions than they used to be. So you never know. It's, it's yeah. not there. So. Uh, you got a few I don't flavors. trust the government or private industries dealing with world issues. Thank you. I'm not giving you my multi-billion dollar weapon. You don't get to control America's national defense anymore. I do. I'm into it. I like it. So but he does know where that goes, right? <laughs> <laughs> he does that that, that storyline. I like think the, the really interesting like thing you. across the first films is because you get start going from the position he's now here describing to actually government oversight is completely necessary. While Cab goes from the like, on the opposite yeah. journey from faith and trust in government to no, I don't trust this oversight body because I've seen what the government's going to do. That, that's one of the things that makes the original sort of first three phases of Marvel really interesting on the backside of things, is you get everything that leads up to the Sokovia records, and then you get the break apart, but that only really is as interesting as it is, because the characters have to go on the journey that takes them in the precise opposite directions from the points at which they start. So, like, yeah. if he's being consistent about this, he would have to rank civil war as one of his least favorite ones right because everything so, about yeah. tony stark that he likes in this one he doesn't like in that one but to be fair he doesn't remember anything that happened in these movies that's true he did, yeah he didn't lead with that, that so i think yeah. he only remembers the he first might be going off, of each movie <laughs> well i think he might be going off vibes yes which is how a lot and of he did say that these other people were, movies, were giving him you know some some input right the the yeah he's getting some help at the beginning we're also but they're yeah, gonna so share like, very similar politics to him probably it'll be it'll it's about vibes this is a vibe check ben shapiro vibe check that's what this is once again our yearly ben shapiro vibe check well i'm just hoping for automatically be on like the low list because of the socialist ants is that how this is going to work oh you mean i hope so (laughs) yeah yeah, i think that would be fair that's i think that's likely um i'm almost more curious now as to which you're going to make it into the top five fan 2008 that's my number one number two Guardians Man, he barely, okay, yes, yes. I right, Guardians, yeah. I thought we might put that. He barely had anything one, to say about why Iron Man's a cool movie. Not really. No. Well, he's going <laughs> to pump out sixteen videos. Yeah, yeah, yeah technically we've done one, so stuff, out of so. ten, so he's got to get going. Let's see. So the original uh, Guardians of the Galaxy was a real breath of fresh air because. Very careful with this music. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So it feels if pretty identifiable. Surely yeah. they would. I have a feeling that Ben's going to be going with the more normy takes for his popular ones. That is just kind of gravitating towards what. Well, the, well I, b- I believe I this is genuine. I think he's just takes, saying this is what he enjoyed yeah, the most. His takes are normy descriptively, right? Yeah, yeah. They're normy mm-hmm. takes because we can all kind of agree that they're pretty good. So, but his reasons for why are funny. the fun parts. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's that, the fun that is part. true. Yeah. <laughs> and, and who knows? He could surprise me. That was just. What does Guardians have to say about idea. government? Do it. It's just funny. It's Chris Pratt and Vin Diesel and Bradley Cooper, and it's creative and Gonzo and bizarre. Wait, and he likes James Vin Gunn. Diesel in that. That's the the actor that he likes in Guardians. Uh, well, he named. He named. He didn't forget Bradley there. Cooper. There. Well, it, yeah, but he forgot uh, Zoe Saldana though, and she's like well, secondly. Well, it's what he, he named three. Are they names he's remembering, or he's reading out of? Like a thing that uh, summarizes. I'm not sure. This is like the movie review. Maybe he thing, remembered right? his three you favorite will, characters. I will say. You don't have a whole lot to say about the movie. You just name the actors who are in it. I feel like Shapiro just forgets that women exist on a regular <laughs> basis. I think. Um, right, but I just no, can't tell you he constantly reminds us that his wife's a doctor, so that can't be the, true. Um, I, I think it's much more reasonable to assume he's reading cast because I think most people would be more likely to not say Bradley Cooper. Um, well, for Rocket. Yeah. You can't do I see. People yeah. do forget he's in the movie. Yeah. And then Vin Diesel as well. He, he literally says yeah. three words, right? It like, does scan okay. like a lot like a Chris Stuckman video. It's like, oh, this is the yeah. person who's in it, and it was fun, and it was good, and yes. goodbye. Well, he did say that Iron Man was fun because he's flying around being libertarian, which is pretty funny. Yeah, but he also did the thing where he's like, yeah, Robert Downey Jr., Jeff Bridges, Gwyneth Paltrow. It's just, this is like the generic movie review thing you do. We just list a bunch of actors who are in the movie because you don't really have much to say about the film. Except that he's not the cinephile that Chris Stuckman is because he mentioned it's a true. Oh my God, that's That's very really funny. I've clearly seen this movie. I do do feel like Ben gives us more than Chris does. 
Just say, uh, you know, I, he does yeah, I does. would rate him he as a, a reviewer. Than Chris. Yeah. Well, hey, I'm all right. He'll surprise you. Yeah, Ben yeah. has the capability to say something that makes me go, "Oh, interesting," that you said that. Mm -hmm. He lets it all hang out. It's just enjoyable. I do have a question. Has Ben forgotten that he introduced those other co-hosts and like asking their opinions? Because we've already he... passed through one movie. And I thought. Been... I thought it was in court. Like, given, was... I... is the idea that all They're of what he's saying him. is a result of the three of them together? Or no? Mm, maybe. Or are they going to pop up? Maybe they'll pop up. They, uh, I'm interested to see how much, they, if they get ignored or not, because they went out of their way to show them. And so now I want to know their opinions, Ben. But anyway. I will say. It'll be funny if they never show up again. <laughs> so far, you know, these are not <laughs> yeah. hot takes. Well, I mean, I guess the rationale is kind of, at least for the first one, but we don't, we don't get any spicy takes yet in terms of the actual picks for movies. I'm excited, though, because there's still room. Yeah, mm. yeah and it's, it's, and it's not meant to, to be it. serious. It's not meant to have any sort of uh, actual... Uh, idea. It's not meant to be serious. Come on. Like, the ending payoff is very them serious. getting Power Stone. And, yeah, like, what are we what are we talking about? Like, the intro yeah. is very serious. Oh, yeah, shit. That's one yeah, of the most... Personal, yeah, the dynamics between them we are, are serious. Group. That's pretty serious. Yeah, that's, that's the whole thing about the audience is it does a really good job of balancing the comedy and the drama. When he reaches mm -hmm. out to his, uh, his mum in the big payoff yeah. at the end, he goes, that's very mm -hmm. serious. <laughs> yeah. This is so one of the I things know. I really hate with uh, media analysis online is, oh, hey, there's a joke in it. That means the entire thing is silly and not serious at all. I fucking hate that it's so much. It's weird, too, because yeah. like I don't think he would agree with himself if he thought about it for a bit longer. He'd probably be like, no, yeah, what I mean is like the funny parts are real funny because you don't have to... Him seriously, but it knows when to be serious. That's what that's what the developed opinion would probably be, right? It's like it it knows when to balance, when to come in, when to come out. But uh, yeah, weird. Logical core. It's just a bunch of people going around doing fun things, and those people may include a non-talking tree as well as a talking raccoon. Well, he's a tree talks. I am yeah, That is the very definition of speaking is what he just showed, <laughs> and he is does it, it in loads of different ways. It's a, it, just because he's speaking Groot language doesn't mean he's not speaking. Yeah, I racist. <laughs> God, what a bigot. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Might be with Ben on that. About to one, open anyway. up a big debate here. <laughs> <laughs> you said that. Wait, Great what? soundtrack. Bad villain. Yeah, Lee, hey. Lee Pace is, is now like every villain. There you go. It. So, we got to hear from him. Ronan oh, would be a bad villain when compared against great ones, but in the MCU, Ronan's not that bad. Like compared to he's pretty decent, he's probably middle of the ground now. Like uh, when you scale, yeah, he's so so. Yeah, he's all right. He's pretty much the base. He's the, he's the base he's, level. He's shallow. Yeah, he's, which is better than being incongruent and incoherent, which is what he most at least. So far. But he has a foundation for that, mm -hmm. like his, like the Cree culture and not wanting to. You know, he he's a renegade to the peaceful Cree. He upholds the old ways, oh, he, more martial you know, warrior power, right? kind of that's thing. It. He wants power. He wants revenge. Pretty straightforward motivations, but that's better than one day in Multiverse of Madness. It was actually nonsense. Well, like, everyone post post Infinity War is just fucked. Yeah, I, I would say, if, yeah. if anything hurt hurt his uh, legacy, it was the way they treated him in Captain Marvel, not not necessarily the way he was portrayed in Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh yeah, but if we go in just from Guardians of the Galaxy, he's not what we would cite as like a great villain. He is a very standard villain. So, so. No, yeah, he's he's, 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 he's yeah, I was yeah, I was saying he's very like all right. basic. But if anything takes him down, it's later appearances, not Guardians sure. of the Galaxy specifically. In every movie, right? Can you explain the raccoon thing? I'm so confused. He's the not raccoon a raccoon thing. Actually. He's, he, he's oh, raccoon like. Don't call me a raccoon! No, well, no he's a raccoon. <laughs> what the, what is going on? He's raccoon. a raccoon. Rocket, Rocket just said, Rocket, don't call him that. Yeah, he said, don't like to be called a raccoon. No, just that's pretty rude right of you, you Fringy. Have you forgotten the ending, is, you like, forgotten the ending of Guardians 3 where he embraced his name, Rocket Raccoon? The one character who came out of that film in a better place. I'm well, sorry. We're not talking about that. We're not talking about that movie. We're talking about yeah, but he, he, if he embraces the identity of a raccoon. Why would you be sitting there saying like, "Whoa, he's not a raccoon"? You need to respect his pronouns. You're not doing that. <laughs> what do you mean? He's a he raccoon. clearly said it. He, he, he said it right there. Rocket raccoon. Right, this this clip. clip is actually old. He this has new opinions. Is... Well, we can't hold anyone to their current opinions. We have to hold people to the things they said years ago. His name Some is of y'all forget we're on the internet. Raccoon. That's what he <laughs> calls himself now. He completed his arc, and this came out after that, so sorry. But objectively, like, he is a raccoon, is he not? He's yeah. Well, he, yeah. He is literally, literally a raccoon. He is yes. literally he is a raccoon. raccoon. Yes. He's not he's a, a raccoon-like alien. He is a raccoon. He's like, 
He is, yeah, in the same way that Wolverine is a human, Rocket Raccoon is a raccoon. Yeah. I'm sorry. He's an alien that looks like a raccoon. Uh -huh. As no, we'll not. see. No, he's they literally lied. not. They lied to that well, he's, whole he's a, he's a raccoon who looks raccoon-like on account of his raccoonity, so... Mm. <laughs> it gets old. Number three. But he's raccoon Oh, so, oh yes! Hey, that's know. a cool oh, pick. Oh, interesting. Yes. Interesting. <laughs> How there. did you know that? When he there, said that he likes decently... the fun light movies, I was like, oh, Ant-Man. Yep. That's like, Ant that's the fun is... light ones. Yeah. It's the definition of the fun I figured light it was, movie. I figured yeah. if it was going to be any of them, it would be the first one. Because there's no way he remembers Ant-Man and the Wasp. And he probably doesn't. No one remembers Ant-Man and the Wasp. Well, and after Quantumania, re-watching Ant-Man, I was like, oh, shit. Ant-Man's quite fun. I do like this movie. Like, it's decent. Is, yeah, it's a fun, funny little movie. movie. Decent movie, funny it's memes, okay. yeah. Yep. Script structure is okay. is pretty solid. And the uh, character shit is, is, is on point. It was it was mostly the, the the thing that held it together the most. I can't remember the actor's name, the Hispanic dude who recounts recants everything but badly. Oh, that, that was... um, Danny Trejo. <laughs> I, no. I don't know why I've forgotten his name. I know you're talking about though. <laughs> I yeah, I think he was. I think the character's name I think was Luis or something like oh, that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Antonio yeah. Banderas. Yes, that was Almost. definitely Antonio Banderas. Michael Pena. Yeah. Right? Michael Pena. That's yeah. his name. Michael yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he made that movie way more enjoyable than it ever should have been. Funny in it. Yeah, and the the movie itself is not like anything great, but at the same time, I don't know. It just scaling is interesting effective. when uh, when you have more things come out. Wildly underrated to me. It's a fun. It's a fun movie. There's nothing serious about it. There's nothing intense. Uh, no, that's ah, not. No, <laughs> there's lots of serious stuff that's very good in it. Intense about it. It's uh, just it's just funny, and Paul Rudd is funny, and the script is good, and it's enjoyable. And and that's all I'm looking for from Marvel movies. I'm not. I understand there are people who watch the Marvel movies and like very into the Captain America, very serious mythology. But one of my big problems with Marvel is that Marvel is wildly inconsistent with its own characters. And we'll get to that when we get to I mean, some of the I mean, true. I wonder why yeah, you would say that. Yeah, he's pretty accurate with that. So, yeah, pick yeah. a phase. And what, and, that, uh... and what does that have to do with it being not serious? What's that got to do with anything? I guess he's saying the less serious it is, the more you can have fun because of when it is too serious, he can't take it seriously because of how silly and inconsistent it is. Mm. Also the fact that he's clearly not to up on the what he's calling mythos, but it's really just the lore and history of of the comics. It What's allows that? him to not have to worry about that. You don't have to track the comics though to have those opinions on the MCU. Well, that's what right? I mean. I'm saying that's what his that's his justification. I'm not saying necessarily mm. you, that people need to do it. But that's his justification. He's saying he doesn't need to worry about that stuff because other. That's one of the reasons why people take it so seriously, and he doesn't care since he doesn't care for it as much. In that case, he probably would have liked Deadpool Wolverine a bit. I don't know if it'll make it in though. Captain America mm. stuff because you'll know that there are no Captain America movies at the top of my list, even though people really, really like the Captain America. I am movies. shocked right now. Oh, why. I am shocked. shocked. Ooh, Doctor am... Strange. Hey. Hey. Doctor Strange. I got one. Doctor Strange 2016. Again, enjoyable. Like, I, I go for enjoyable with the Marvel movies. So, Benedict Cumberbatch is great as Doctor Strange. I, I like origin stories. I do. Uh, and, and you'll notice that most. I'm still worried about them. That fucking them? backing track, honestly. Mm -hmm. Hoping it'll be all right. A bit loud. We'll see. Hopefully, they would have taken that into account. Yeah, but there's always chats. the whole. If only YouTube was consistent. There's the how long is this twelve minute video versus our twelve hour stream and bots yeah. change based on your uh, yeah. you know length. Most of these are sort of the original. Most of these are sort of the originals, right? Like Ant Man's an origin story, Guardians of the Galaxy is an origin story, Iron Man's an origin story. Like I want to know the backstory. Once we know the characters and they have like random sort of adventures, I find it less interesting because there's very little character development that happens from these characters. They're more like sitcom. Uh, ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh. Yeah, I mean, uh, disagree, no. but... <laughs> I mean, it's so weird to hear I mean, him say Iron that. Iron Man 2 and 3, he almost and had, Civil he, War, and then Avengers and all that. Oof, that's a big oof. He almost had something there, because he almost, uh, instead of, if he wouldn't have said sitcom, he would have said it becomes episodic. I would have been, it would have been closer, but the way he, he went about it was definitely... It's weird, awful. though, because... Yeah, he, like, just take mm -hmm. Thor... Well, yeah, Thor, Tony Stark, again, it's like the example we've already brought up. Like for a guy who began by saying that you know, he doesn't pay much attention to Marvel stories and then says that he doesn't like the way the characters are inconsistent and is now saying that the characters don't develop, which is a statement you can only make if you've been paying attention. Um, it, like, it doesn't quite add up because like, evidently he's not paying attention because there is a lot of character development across the first three phases. It becomes dumb and stupid and inconsistent after that point. But like there is an objective arc, even from like Iron Man, who he named as his favorite. So, well, no. you know, like a Winter Soldier, yeah, yeah. that's a huge change for Cap from beginning to end of that film. You wouldn't call that sitcom. You'd you'd you'd, you'd have to rank that as you know as, as much as, if not more, than right, an yeah. origin story. You know, 
He was looking for episodic. He was not looking for sitcom implies that, you know, things reset back. It's very uh, whereas episodic would have a, a consistent growth for the characters. I think that's what he was going for, but he said it wrong. No, I mean, it sounded like he meant, you know, sitcom. -y. He doesn't think there is any growth. I he so he talks so fast I'm missing some of what he's saying mm. too so it's I'm pretty sure he he very specifically means that I don't think there's any growth it's like a sitcom it resets every time Well well what are your thoughts on the criticism of him doing like a second rate RDJ impression as Doctor Strange Kind of maybe but it, it, but I don't know. I feel like that's a stretch. Also, if you're imitating somebody who's been incredibly successful as a as a superhero, then that's gotta be too loud on the music. I swear, <laughs> it's just, it's just uh, unnoticeable. I mean, pausing it every once in a while is probably the safe way to go. Also, mm -hmm. it seems very reductive to say, yeah, Benedict Cumberbatch was just being uh, Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man when he played Doctor Strange. He was. I've not. never even considered yeah, absolutely. that. Absolutely, never even considered that. I mean, if you want to take that argument. Me. If you want to take that argument pretty far, you could say that they've tried to turn every character into the quippy Spider-Man-esque, you know, one-liners. So you can go. It is the than... unfair criticism that is levied on Joss Whedon. Well, it might be the go, fair Phil. criticism levied on the later, like the latter phases of, of uh, Marvel's content, because there is there is developed as a criticism that everybody is pretty much like yeah, molding people... into the same creature. People blame him for other people trying to do what he did, but very poorly, oftentimes, and say me. And I don't understand why that's terrible or bad. Like, like I, I, I think it's kind of a weak criticism. Okay, and then, again, filling oh, okay, out we'll my enjoyable nice. but not important movies, Thor Ragnarok. A lot of I was huh. about to ask that's if a, he was going to put this on the list. That's a bit of a surprise, actually. Which we did. I, I'm I don't think so. Not based, Iron Man, not based on the way he... Iron Man, Guardians, Ant Man, Doctor Strange, Thor Ragnarok is his five. Then, yeah, okay. based on that the fact that he was saying that he loves the lighter ones that have uh, funny ones, fun, the light yeah. funny, funny ones. ones. I, I'm yeah. not shocked by this in the slightest. Th this, this I was going to ask if you think this would be number five. Um, I'm not. I don't surprised know. At all. Uh, well, isn't it interesting that he just said not too long ago that he was mainly interested in when they're doing like origin stories, and Thor Ragnarok is the end. Of a trilogy, in a sense. Yes, but like I think the funniness, the, the funny, I think the funny nature and the humor went out over that for him. I guess so. I it's guess a very so. enjoyable must... watch. Oh yeah, I mean, I think it's hilarious. But uh, I'm I a little bit surprised too, yeah. that he picked this. I figured, I figured it would have been Avengers. Um, that just, especially that since, been good... since you could say that it kind of fits into the origin story. The origin of them as a team, like, in the kind loosest of. way possible. Yeah, yeah, exactly. the origin of the yeah. Avengers as a team. Yeah, mm, all right. I think like original Thor. I'm not as big a fan of original Thor. I think it takes itself too seriously. And Thor mm, Ragnarok is just pure silly. Interesting, because a lot of people have the reverse take, mm. right? Yeah, That's now yeah, I don't. Well, I don't know anybody who now. likes the first Thor. I know. I mean, I, I like no, 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 it's, it's starting to. It seems like okay. now people are starting to kind of wonder, like, hmm, maybe we went a little bit too far with Clown Thor, uh, which yeah. I mean, we have. Um, but I mean, I wouldn't say it's it's not like a Ragnarok problem. It's more like an Endgame onward problem. Fat Thor was a bad idea. It was a terrible idea. Yeah, terrible. Do you and want so to see you're Thor watching playing it... Fortnite and yelling at people. Over nope, no, Xbox no one yeah. said yes because, to that. Because Ragnarok Thor was very funny. Because well, actor has a great you know sense of comedic time and, and delivery. Uh, but it also uh, Ragnarok had very serious moments in it. I mean, it was kind of like the 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 culmination of his, you know, arc and Odin, and as it was a serious, it was a serious movie. It was also um, very very funny. I tend to pair it. I would, if I we pair it with um, cool. Infinity War, I would have an analysis like that. Which I do think Infinity War doesn't hit as hard without Ragnarok. If you watch them I together, but I, I would say that if you compare the ratio of serious moments in Ragnarok to all of the films before, it's not really close to those ones. I'd well, say and, it is very much. It is insane that so seriously most of the time. Infinity War like fixed Thor fully. Finally, he was like fully realizes like why we should have him as one of the main three. It really feels like without the work in that, that we wouldn't have felt like they'd actually earned the the shot in Endgame with the three of them are heading towards Thanos. But yeah, for some reason we had that huge deviation with fat, fat Thor that just 
fucking damage the shit out of that arm. They just thought it was funny. They thought it was so funny. It and you're like, this is just this is just funny. The scene where he's in the arena and suddenly the Hulk appears is really funny. Like it's 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 one of the most memeable Marvel movies, Thor Ragnarok. Yeah. That's just, I never thought Agreed. I'd be hearing this from <laughs> the reason <laughs> Ben Shapiro uh, picks nah. Thor Ragnarok is because it's the most memeable. You're like, all right. Ben's been on the internet a while now. <laughs> he has. He's, he's, ben is not actually, he's not old, and he's been on the internet quite a while now. I think that, you know, the diffusion of meme and internet culture is, it's gonna, it will get through to him through proximity eventually. <laughs> yes! And then they proceeded to just destroy Thor as a character. He, well, yeah, well, what the hell? Like, why? We'll just make Fat Thor. Okay, that's like a one off joke. You can't do anything with that. But he spends like all of a. I guess there are things you could do, but they didn't. <laughs> like, the, the, yeah, there I are would, things you I'm could do. I'm with him. I never would have recommended it. It's just, yeah. Bad move. Bad move. Avengers just being fat. Now, Avengers Infinity War and Endgame is sort of my extra here. Will, will, oh, do not love it. That's, okay. You didn't, that's you didn't cry in the theater. Not even remotely. Wow. I liked the the only reason it makes the top. Oh god, this music's gonna is, kill us. Is he saying? Yeah, is he gonna be like honorable mention? Is that what he's trying to say here? Well, yeah, I, I, I think, think that's so. what I think. I so. guess yeah. so. Yeah. All right. You know what? Yeah. Six I, even yeah. is because of the ambition of it. One of the problems in in the Marvel universe, just generally, is that the I have to pause. This is just too. This yeah. track particularly no, is gonna get fair. picked up like crazy by the bots. The villains are not that good. The small. Oh, oh, the villains oh, aren't that good. Wait, but he said wow. about Infinity War. Okay. 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 Wait, was he saying that about the movies in general? Or? Well, yes. we'll be able to guess from content. I don't want to rewind him because we're risking more and more to get the stream fucking shut down, unfortunately. Oh. So in, in, in the DC universe, you have Joker, who's like an all-time great villain. You have Lex Luthor, who's an all-time great villain. Just pausing well, for safety. Yeah, but okay. those are... Sure, those... The, yeah, those are... Not yeah, like the I, same cinematic sure universes, that, like, but what's gonna sure. happen, I would... though, like he doesn't include like Dark Ock or Green Goblin, you know, like particularly high up or in high regard. I'm not sure. And these are these like amazing this. villains. And then you go to the Marvel universe, and it's like Thanos, whose logic doesn't even make sense. But what about Loki though? He's pretty good. Well, well Loki's pretty good until is, until his own show. War Thanos is good. He isn't counting Spider-Man villains then? Huh. Okay. So, what do you guys think about a statement of Thanos's logic not making any sense? Uh, but it's kind of argue logic. You can argue, you can argue yeah. that for sure. <laughs> the problem they made was like, that they agree. didn't push him. For, they should have had Doctor Strange push him to the 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 fundamental question everyone wants to ask, which is why not create more resources? And if Thanos said, because I'm not trying to make everyone fat and complacent until they eat up all those resources. I need to, the new world needs to, didn't he say something at some point that once they've lived through that experience, they're not gonna make that same, that was supposed to be the permanent the solution come out aspect. Or something. Yeah, it was supposed to be, I only have to do this once, and for, from generations on, they will know what it means to like value their lives, to value the resources. Like if you can make him crazy and make him say that, but at least that's, that's better than not answering the question as though you're afraid to answer it. Yeah. Um, because yeah, I mean, the they mad. Could played, they could have played up the crazy a little bit more. He, yeah. he is the mad titan after all. So, because uh... massive strength. Like he's he's confusing shortage and scarcity. Like there is no scarcity <laughs> of space and resource in the universe, right? Like he's looking at people who have run into shortages on specific planets and saying, "Oh no, we've we've completely run out of everything we need. Therefore, cull half the population." But actually, yeah, because on Earth we we're doing okay, exactly the same thing, just by using the Infinity Stones to spread people out across the universe more efficiently. Yeah. No, they, they, this is what I mean. There needed to be more uh, criticism and more answers. They have their this scene, the Doctor Strange Thanos one. That should have been it. They should have covered most of their bases there. But it seems like they avoid it because the writers can't quite justify that motivation. Yeah, I don't. I I never saw that scarcity in Guardians of the Galaxy. Earth seems to do, to be doing just hunky dory. I never saw it anywhere else. Well, why can't um, he create infinite resources so. somewhere and then everyone keep can doing take from it? it? We have infinity stones. I mean, why couldn't they generate food? Which what I mean, like these things. Lunch can be whatever I want. There needs to be answers <laughs> for this stuff, and there wasn't, which uh, definitely no. gives him weaknesses. Yeah, no as, answers. Uh, motivation. No questions. Thanos. Who's... Do you guys remember when James Cameron said that Thanos had the right idea? No, did he? <laughs> I don't remember that. Yeah. Can he said Thanos a, had the right idea, but the problem is no one wants to volunteer to be the person <laughs> what the to, to leave. Yeah, no, that's but a real after thing. He, but his, yeah, after watching the Avatar movies, I, I wonder what he thinks about humanity. It's a weird kind of, like, <laughs> what a strange guy.
It's like uh. there, there was overpopulation on my planet and that caused war. So what if I just make half of everything disappear? Okay, well, if you have like... Just pull some for music. That was half. Mm -hmm. I mean, fair, fair. I think he's about to ask the big questions mm -hmm. here. He's about, he's, about to, he's about to... Yeah. The glove that can manifest. Why don't you just make extra planets, my dude? <laughs> <laughs> but the big problem that I have, again, in these universes is that... Just pulls him for I music. I like how he calls it the glove that can manifest <laughs> shit. He's right. <laughs> he's like, well, I mean, yeah, it's... That's... Yeah. It, it, that's the... That's the good name. The glove that can manifest shit. No one actually dies. Like, nobody just stays dead. Like, just stay dead. Like, if you're down, stay down, man. You just don't know when to give up, do you? I'm gonna do this all day. Wait, so are these not following the comic books, like, at all? Like, they just start making stuff up? Why'd you have to keep playing the... Tell the soundtrack. Yeah, <laughs> Please. stop. Why would you tempt... Why would you tempt fate? Half Surely it's bad even and for their channel. You'd think. Also, these two are the highest grossing in worldwide box office. Is that because... Oh god, I'm just trying to be careful. I'm sorry. I hate to pause no, this it's much fine, it's on fine. every frame of balls. No, yeah. They're good or because they have the most characters in them. It was an event. This is an event movie. This is like <laughs> Truly it was. That's uh, true. Yeah, truly there it was, was. Really an event. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There was uh, yeah. there was there was definitely some reductionism going on right there for sure. This this is the first big event movie in the theaters that I like this was the biggest event in the theaters since the relaunch of the Star Wars brand in like the 90s. Uh. It was like the finality of like a a uh, 23 movie run so a lot of people were invested there, there yeah. there's some rough moments in in endgame that that one shot there of all the rough female moments in this, endgame. it's mostly yeah, rough no. moments. it makes it makes <laughs> sense it makes sense he would go to this first yeah. the woman scene yeah but really it's, it's the completely like, nonsensical it's, it's the story time travel but, yeah, it's oh, yeah. the logistics of this final battle it's the total breaches of character it's embarrassing it's, it's, it's notably it's just actually a disaster uh, there are people this by the way the who have said cringe. Like, the cringe thing about this is that the women only got this one scene in the film. Like, that was their take, as though this is nowhere near enough. It's like, why would you want the this? Part is, how did they all end up in the same place at around about the same time in the middle girl of this power. crazy battle? Girl power. Why would you want a girl, scene girl, like this? Girl gravitational pull. That's true. Women are naturally attracted to each other. Yes. That's why they always go to the bathroom side. together. Shad instantly leaves. <laughs> <laughs> it's real rough. Uh, the, the, the moment when Captain Marvel shows up. So Captain Marvel breaks the, D, the Marvel Universe. She just destroy like the. He's not wrong. He's not wrong. She could win yeah. anything instantly yeah. whenever just she wants. Goes up and wins a Boring, day. worthless character. Cool. She just breaks mm -hmm. it. I mean, we'll we'll get to this when we get to when we get to the worst. Okay, ah, yeah, 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 the, worst, yeah. the worst. We'll get to more of these rankings, Ooh. which you're either loving or hating. Yeah, just one moment. First, get into credit. Time. The rankings. By the way, are, they're I'll okay. Say, they're okay. They're, they're pretty good. Yeah, they're I'm pretty fine. good. I liked all of the movies that he mentioned, with the exception of honorable mention number two. Yes. But uh, Endgame mm -hmm. had a great moments in it. Little oases, but uh, hmm. But yeah, solid top five list. Not bad. Solid ben. top yeah, five. Not list. bad. You know, just when we were talking about how the women naturally kind of came together, well, <laughs> women do naturally synchronize, so maybe that is <laughs> on the battlefield as well. <laughs> on the battlefield, that's right. It, it they're, just fighting, they're fighting out with, styles. They're, they're natural, <laughs> sync, you know, they're, how their cycles naturally synchronize. It draws them together like that. That's I see. Women magic. That, they they magic hundred percent as well. They can fire these giant sky laser as well. That's how it works. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> really easy but getting out yeah the system is set up so you have a hard time True. doing it if you're struggling with credit yeah, cards agreed. personal loans collections or medical bills Ooh. you need to check out pds debt pds provides a service to Purity match you with debt, debt solutions, solutions. Okay. pds sounds like you've yeah, got a disease Pure <laughs> pds <laughs> i have pds yeah, yeah. i have penis uh, derangement syndrome. <laughs> penis derangement syndrome i <laughs> no we what's the call that penis envy <laughs> What's the opposite of that? I have that. Penis deflation. <laughs> <is terrible. laughs> penis, it's when your penis gets deflated and you, you can't inflate easily. And then it cuts to this image without, and you're like, what, what is this? Like, it's, those are the doctors looking at the test results is, for your penis, penis deflation. deflation. <laughs> is, hang on, hang on. Is this the condition that happens whenever you look at Lizzo or something like that? No. She's in Star no, Wars. That's inversion syndrome. That's, that's, that's a, very similar, but not the same. Okay, I'm ed I'm getting educated on this. Oh, your financial deflection syndrome. Situation. If you're making payments every month on your debt and your balances Nine, still aren't three, going down, PDS has three, solutions one, one, for four, you. Four, Everyone four. with ten grand or more oh, in eligible debt qualifies. That there is no minimum credit score required. Bad wow. and fair credit are accepted. So if you ever get into these debt situations, you know. It's what does this have to do with superheroes? Yeah. Damn it, Ben. Really rough to get out. I have friends.
They using these lots of money. EDS, they are the Avengers of loans of debt solutions. Yeah. <laughs> They're superheroes. They're like those lame, lame, da, 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 lame, da. lame superhero mascots that like, oh, I'm an insurance. We we sell insurance. Here's our mascot, and it's like a superhero. And you're like, oh, stop. That's lame. Oh, have it be like a stop. dog or something. It's a highly relevant app. Like, have you just spent two hundred and fifty million dollars on secret of a secret invasion? <laughs> then you will need PDS. Yeah, you'll need PDS. Yeah. Friends who've had this, it's really tough. PDS Debt is the best way to get out. PDS Debt has customized options for anyone struggling with credit cards, personal loans, collections, or medical. All of these images are three people. That's got to be some kind of standard, I guess. Or... Now I'm just thinking about that Family Guy joke, right, where they had all of the stock images with the commentary on, like, the, you know, like, the professors holding the class outside <laughs> with all of the students on the lawn. <laughs> like, so... You know, like, this isn't the, it's a litmus test. I'm not saying it's the best litmus test, but if you want insight whether, you know, one of these uh, um, promotions are actually truly endorsed by the person, they will say if they really use it. And I think Ben does it as well. It's like, I, this is something I actually use, guys, in my real life. Yes. But if it's that's a cons big, yep. Yeah, if it's conspicuously absent, mm. makes me just wonder, like, hmm. Or maybe he's if just you... not in debt, loser. Or maybe he doesn't yeah. have penis yeah. deflate. <laughs> he's a, he's a He's a financially conservative guy. He's not. He's going to try to avoid debt or make sure that he manages his debt. So he's not going to need this. He's. Yeah, he's I mean, issue. he's. He's. You know, he's Ben Shapiro. So you know, you're saying be, his penis is fully inflated. Be all right. He has a Ben Shapiro has a fully inflated natural. Well, not natural. It's circumcised, but his penis <laughs> you know? is. Great. I think I'd sure. rather go back to talking about Boogie, actually. Yeah, let's talk about that. He strives to understand your specific scenario. They can help provide alternative solutions to becoming debt-free. Save more go. while paying off your debt in a fraction of the time. Stop waiting. PDS. Start saving. Get a free debt analysis right now at pdsdebt.com slash Shapiro. It only takes 30 seconds. It's pdsdebt.com slash Shapiro today. Again, pdsdebt.com slash Shapiro. Go check them God, out. That's going to get annoying if you say it like okay. a million times, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. pdsdebt.com But they said in their thing, you got to say it fast. Five fucking times if you He's, know we'll come. He through. says it like it's on the radio and you'll miss it. Yeah. All right now. And I'm driving. I'm, I'm driving. Oh, this now, is this is what we would call a temporary disability. If I'm driving ooh. in my car and Ben Shapiro on the radio is telling me about PDS debt.com slash Shapiro, oh. and I'm trying to focus so I don't kill myself Remember, and or others. We would have cycled. I'm, oh, I need debt solutions. We would have cycled by then. For example, Shad and many people in chat have no idea what you're referencing, but earlier oh, it was you're discovered. Right. That having things such as a heavy accent or people talking around you counts as a as, as a situational disability. Situational disability. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Listen, if you <laughs> you, oh, what what you kind of going... accent? <laughs> heavy. <laughs> That's all it says. Heavy accent. Like, like having a like having a British accent is that a disability? I mean, it is a disability. Uh, but yeah, is it, British does it count as a situational yeah, like, disability? The guy in Alien Romulus, he had a disability. It was very obvious. Wow. I, I the, mean, more, the more cockney, the more disabled, is what I you're mean, saying. Ever, oh, no. ever, ever since that gamer girl came out saying that children were situational disabilities, and I have five of them, I was like, holy crap! Yeah, you're a lot of disabled. I'm hyper, like, absolutely yeah. retarded now. That's amazing. Okay. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Uh, now I can add more to the list. Because I have an accent. Mm -hmm. Arguably one of the worst five. accents. So the worst is Captain Marvel. Hey, Captain there we go. Yes. <laughs> Yay, there we go. Yeah, pretty Excellent, easy. Excellent choice. Is a well written <laughs> character sometimes. Marvel is I mean, of course, yeah. <laughs> Marvel is terrible. And you can see it from the I Rotten Tomatoes. It would be so funny existed. if he had said, Jesus. Captain Marvel, it's terrible, and then moved on. <laughs> like, this just, everyone knows, no one needs to discuss this. So, let me just but, but, give you the Rotten hey, Tomatoes. Like, yeah. like, what truly is the worst one now? Because Marvel just keeps sinking to Multiverse of Madness. Multiverse of Madness is typically what we would I mean, yeah. are we including the TV shows? Because then... Uh, hmm. um, Loki, season one. Ooh. Well, Echo... <laughs> Echo was not. Echo's nothing. Echo's not close. Echo, Echo, Echo does close. very little damage to the things around it. It's mostly just to itself. Meanwhile, like Multiverse Remember Madison shows... Loki annihilate the universe. So yeah. as well as characters right. they, that we care about. They bend time and space to make everything a fucking hellscape also, for the entirety of the cosmos. Secret... Consequentially bad. I would also add Falcon and Winter Soldier, not because it's consequential to the universe, but just it's because bit. it's so repugnant in so many different um, ways. I'm with you on that. Um, Secret Invasion might actually be competitive. Secret Invasion. Yeah. 
That does it a is, lot of yeah. damage to uh, Nick Fury. It's like, huge damage to the world as well. Well, well yeah. yeah, and the world in in the way that like the TVA and stuff, they break the world and it doesn't make sense. And on some like very base kind of fundamental mm -hmm. level, the cosmos is completely mm -hmm. fucked. The interpersonal and daily lives of most of the characters in the MCU aren't going to be affected by that in the way that they behave. But Secret Invasion does set up world building issues that fundamentally change the way that any events occurring on Earth Which have to be fair, Loki did. Yeah, it, it, breaks, it breaks Earth. Yeah, I was actually going to say, does, another one to consider would be Endgame. That's got to be up there as well. Oh, of course, yeah. Endgame is uh, pretty catastrophic in terms of the it's amount of damage, damage it deals, both forward See, and, I... <laughs> and earlier. This is what I mean. It's so funny to think back in the day when you know Captain Marvel was the worst that we had. Yeah. I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, you, you had was. no idea how much worse it could get after that, though, because we have just been. God. That's kind yep. of what we had for uh, Phase Four and Five of the MCU was all new ways of defining what a one out of ten looks like, or in the case of Multiverse <laughs> Madness, even worse than that. God, Secret Invasion was so awful. But then again, so painful. How many of all the ones we just mentioned were. Oh. <laughs> Scores for the ones that I thought were the best, right? Iron Man, ninety-four percent Rotten Tomatoes, ninety-one percent audience. I don't know why. Guardians I'm not sure why. Galaxy, we Mac don't want to. It doesn't Batman, really matter. It isn't really a good measure of anything. Unfortunately, I mean, it's worth. It's got to be worth something. It's just not something we we care about really. Like it is interesting to I mean, compare, I suppose. I mean, it tells you all, it, all it really tells you is how audiences and critics reacted to something or how they feel Broadly, about it. Broadly, but still, that's, that's all it really gives us. It's still Even very sample yeah. sizedly. Like it's still of a, you know, it, well, it's the kind of people who use Rotten Tomatoes, which isn't like most people. Most people just go well, watch no, movies and they don't. Them. Let's say a great I mean, film. Awesome. Made. Selection there. Yeah. If a great film comes out and gets low scores on these, people just say like they were wrong on this one. And then if they get high scores when they were bad films, they go they were wrong on this one. You, you know what I mean? Like there's no, yeah. there's yeah. we don't we don't say anything about the film as a result of this. Not we can't even broadly say the audience broadly enjoyed it as a result of this number. Not necessarily. It's uh. Well, yeah. people use Rotten Tomatoes broadly enjoyed it. I mean, yeah. It, it, well, that. It oh is God. mostly it is mostly useless, except when something like the Acolyte gets one of the lowest scores out of any Marvel show. Anyway, then that's just funny. That's just hilarious. Uh, well, especially if they change the system afterwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, remember, Cap um, yeah, Captain yeah. Marvel was the movie that got them to and make wasn't some pretty. You know, yeah. it wasn't eighty six yeah. the number that they locked Rise of Skywalker on for Rise of Skywalker is yeah, something like yes. that. Yeah, oh. so, well, I, I can bring that up because like. Yeah, and we, and we all, I everyone... I trust scores because of that. Yeah, everyone on Earth knows there's no fucking way the average score from the audience for Rise of Skywalker was 86. There's no way. I just, no. uh, yeah, just double-checked. It is still sitting at 86%. I mean, I know it's not a perfect one, but I've said it before. My sample was uh, one of the guys in the theater who kept saying, oh, fuck off, when stupid things happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, you sure he was the YouTuber? Off yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's off of the course, charts. The, the last one, the funniest one, was when she said, Rise Skywalker. <laughs> well, also, bear in mind, say. right, everyone, the TLJ has 41, while Tr Tross has 86. No fucking way. <laughs> all right, all right. Yeah. I've got a hypothetical for you all. Pretend you guys were one of the, the individual running Rotten Tomatoes, okay? okay. And, uh, and you didn't tomato. have the same... Yeah, you're Mr. Tomato, and you didn't have the same standards that you guys have in real life, okay? You are corruptible, you can be bought. How much money... Would Disney you, have Seb, to offer nice. you? Yeah, how much money would Disney have to offer you to lock in those scores for them? All right, about three fifty. About three fifty k. What's the, the figure? Dollars. That's that's an odd question. I don't know. If I was a different person, how much money would it take for me to to basically become corrupt on a website that? Reviews movies and keeps that's well, because an assuming you owned it as well. So. Yeah, the purpose I mean, of the question is I wonder how much Disney actually paid them off. Like, I do think money was probably a lot. The the, yeah, I think so. Yeah, in theory, think, there would be a number for totally all of us, correct. right? There's usually a, an yeah, amount. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. there is well, a assuming number. Assuming it's 100% privately owned, yeah, just whatever you got in your pockets, man, I'll lock it or whatever you want. Uh, feels like it's got to be more apt in terms of the idea of like well what is the relationship between uh like press and and reviews as stuff like ads right of like hmm if, you, yes. if you're like, getting massive ad payment for a specific thing surely oh. that may have some influence on the way that they would uh rate that thing in a review you would think so <laughs> i would, would say yeah so. like 
how much what would the deal have to be for you to kind of lock yourself in to be like a Disney like satellite company in the, in a sort of way um isn't it Amazon that understand. owns Rotten Tomatoes well in in the sense of Disney can call you up and they can say hey we got this big movie coming out and it listen it needs to look good you know i really hope yeah. that it does well on Rotten Tomatoes we're really really hoping that this happens and there's this understanding of continued support or payments or whatever it is. And so you know you're going to have to be beholden to that. I don't is, know. There's uh, a number. NBC Universal, but by the way. I, oh, okay. I'm thinking like maybe yeah. 50K. Or I can... Really? That little? Yeah. That would be I... kind of like... Because it, it, both ends would be wanting to negotiate. Disney would want to pay them the least amount to get what they want. They would want to get the most. And I so... feel like Disney would come in with a pretty strong offer. They, I think they got money to throw around and they'd want you to know it uh, because I mean, and also consider if you're running a big site like Rotten Tomatoes, chances are you probably make a decent chunk of change on the traffic and the ads and stuff. So yeah. I think it would have to be a substantial enough money to sort of change your, your, your class, so to speak. Like this needs to be a significant amount of money. It's not going to be 50 K because that'll just be like, Oh, I, that's not enough for me to, get into this because I already make a decent amount of money from this site and whatever else even it is then, I do. Even if you took that into account, right? You could just do what Sony did and make up a fake critic and just do it that way and affect the scores. I, I, I like the, there's only so much that I'm willing to pay you if I can just do it another way, you know? Yeah, but, I, so it's they, probably a continuous sort of thing uh, where it's like did every like they know at Rotten Tomatoes dot com HQ Disney can call them up and say, hey, it would be really, really, we sure do wish this film of ours gets a good rating on your site. And then things, you know, get put into the motion. It's a continued thing. And even well, then, think right, for... like the thing about Rotten Tomatoes is that they sort of work like Metacritic, where they are adjusting the the weighting of, of who's involved, right? So, like, that's how they would be able to determine who, who is a higher ranked uh, um, critic and so on to affect that score. Like they wouldn't just artificially give you three points. That wouldn't make any sense. But they could, couldn't they? They could just change the numbers as they want, could they, on the back end? Or do they need to uh, be affected? I mean, a I lot mean, of it, the sort of pressure right? happens on the level of individual critics, but there are these moments where they, like, at, like clearly they get them to freeze scores and things like that. Sometimes, and those those are the cases where it seems like a decision being made at the like Rotten Tomatoes higher level. But for the most part, it's just you know inviting critics to you know early access screeners and all that sort of fun stuff. Yeah, and giving them a steak, you know, and a milkshake, and saying here's a, oh my a God. swag bag, and now they're gonna like it a little bit more. You know, they're gonna take you to a press. Yeah, this I mean, is gonna I mean, sound. This is gonna sound crazy, but like it, it shocked me. I'm I'm literally ordering a pizza right now because we'll be fucking streaming for a day. And <laughs> on meat, I was cl as you said, steak. I I literally was clicking steak on the. I knew it. Section. I was watching. You That's along. why I said that was fucking <laughs> wild. That's I'm insane. Right behind you. It was a, it was the exact same time. Like as the mouse was clicking, you said it. That's nuts. That's incredible. Did you get a milkshake too? No. You should. Little that milky, I can milky. Be. I can't. It doesn't come with a little thing that they're doing. Oh, that's. How can we bad. be they, delaying seeing what Ben's choosing for all of his negative reviews of Marvel movies? Can't believe this. I'm we're we're talking about Rotten Tomatoes. And My bad. Stuff. Sorry. There is God, he, It's because he brought up of... Rotten Tomatoes, and it it and there we go. He mentioned yeah. something, and there we went. We did. I think completely forgot we were even doing the Ben Shapiro thing. I was just. Oh yeah, I was too busy thinking about pizza. <laughs> so it's, it's I think so it's good. worth mentioning as well that Rotten Tomato scores don't actually account for anything, right? Like Fallen Kingdom made a billion and a half dollars, and I think it's at forty percent on both the critic and audience scores. So, like these scores are. Oh, I think absolutely. Sorry, meaningless. I think they did some. They did some research on this, and it's about thirty percent of moviegoers that check the score before they decide to go see a movie or not. So it's not most of them, but it's still a sizable chunk. That's a big chunk. That's almost yeah. sure. That's but it still lot. means that seventy percent of people are going and spending their fifteen dollars and making billion dollar movies out of you know bad films because they, they don't really affect things like that. So they matter. Even if, uh, I think yeah, they, they, 
Dude. I, 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 I want to say that, that it's the other way around, right? Like that's what I'm I'm saying. It's not that somebody doesn't look at the score. It's that they will still go see it, right? They will come out of the film having paid for it and tell other people to go see it. And it will still make plenty of money, billions of dollars because they didn't like it. Sure. But they still go and see it. They go see the next one. They go see the next one, right? Like, it's not that that people are looking at these scores and going, oh, that's a bad movie. I'm not going to go see it. It's that they are going to see it and then coming out with the, the, the reviews. It doesn't really affect things like that, right? People go on their opening weekends and, and things like that. And, yes, yeah, second weekend numbers are very important uh, and long tail is, is very important. But... When people are making these decisions, they, they aren't looking at these scores and they're not affecting things because they haven't made the scores yet, right? Well, they're affecting them to a degree. But yes, there is a sizable percentage of the movie-going audience that doesn't care. and will kind of go see it either way. Yeah, but they're looking yeah, to go out anyway bad. and do something. I, I think it does... I, I, I think it matters... It, it's tough to say when I think that that 30 percent number of Rotten Tomatoes, it's that's a substantial amount of people. That's a huge chunk. So that was 30 percent much... of people who will check it before they go to see yeah. a movie. That's so decide whether so they go to see a movie based on it. Yeah, that's a that's a lot of people. But I, I think, I think a lot of people to, might I think also we have to see the total number of, of their traffic as well to, to really make a true determination. I just don't que I question whether or not a review score, especially from a critic in an age where we no longer respect journalists, right? In that sort we of don't. space. Well, well people, I, mean, I people don't, don't think I think people see people movie critics do. different than journalists. I mean still. Well not only that, yeah, general. we're we're in a very select group of people who don't try most people are gonna look at that and be like, oh well, well. you even said seventy percent don't. Well, right? I'm saying, but there's still a huge chunk of people who will go to that as an as a argument tool after the fact that didn't use it well, to decide to see a movie. I'm <laughs> saying, like, so there's still, but that adds to the percentage of people who take the number seriously. I'm not saying that people don't take it seriously after the fact. I'm saying that they're not going to decide to go see a movie based off of the score necessarily. Even if only 30% are looking at it, how much of that 30% are actually saying, well, you know, I didn't want to see the new Doctor Strange movie, or I, I wanted to see the new Doctor Strange movie, but the critics are saying it's bad. Or are they going to do the same thing that, that people typically do, where they say, wow, those critics have been wrong a dozen times before. I'm going to go see it. Well, it's probably would you say, great. Would you say that of the 30%, do you think it's unreasonable that half of them might decide not to go to a movie based off of uh, Rotten Tomato scores? Sure, but then we're talking 15%. And, that's and a 15, huge... 15%, just be clear, that's a lot. Sure, but that still means 85% are showing up and paying $15 without caring. No, that I think that, that's the corporate cope of that, right? 15% is a huge number. That On a billion-dollar movie, that's $150 million. Sure. That's the budget, that's the budget of a movie, that, of a big movie. Don't, don't underestimate 15%. That's a lot. I'm not saying that that it doesn't affect things. What I'm saying is I don't think that we can look at a score and say that that is actually going to make any difference to an, a random individual's determination of whether they're going to go spend money on this movie. That's all I'm saying. I think it has an effect. How much yeah, of an effect? I'm not sure, but I do think that it does have an effect. If it didn't it have an effect, really I mean, the, an effect, these people wouldn't know whether or not it has an effect. That's why they're making the decision whether or not they're going to pay money to hypothetically freeze the score. I know people who look at the Rotten Tomatoes score and say, hey, um, that, that people are saying good things about it. It's like the early word of mouth stuff yeah. that gets momentum going behind interest for a movie. Most people, I think, who use Rotten Tomatoes, this is completely unscientific, but my impression is most people will look at the score and not have a clue where the score comes from. So there's a difference between looking at the score, which is the aggregate of people who rate it above 50%, and actually taking the individual critics who give it that score seriously. I don't know very many people who read movie criticism generally. Um, but they might look at the Rotten Tomatoes score and say, well, other people are saying this is worth seeing, so I might consider going to see it. Even if it's a, a marginal difference, that marginal difference adds up to a lot by the time it actually comes to accounting for the, the total gross. It is interesting how uh, 
I guess, easy it is to be swayed by someone whose opinion, if you generally trust something like, uh, you know, all you blokes here, I generally really like everyone's uh, opinions on the show. And if I, if I even if just say Mauler, um, or, or uh, you know, Platoon says, hey, this is a really good movie, and I wasn't considering seeing it, just that one comment alone usually is like, all right, I might give it a look. That's all it takes. And so if people only need a, the slightest kind of indication that y this is a good movie, I think that can affect people's willingness to go check something out. And something that's that what it's like with me. Happens with mm -hmm. Rotten Tomatoes, I think, for a lot of people, and with general aggregate sites. There's a certain number that if the movie gets over it, they'll be like, oh, it must be good then. Like, if it, if it managed to get that high. Yeah. And uh, culturally the, the speaking, too... The movie going too, equivalent to... Uh, I was just going to say, like, remember when Black Panther had 100% when it when it dipped below because someone said the combat wasn't very good in it, the, combat, the fight scenes, uh, fucking furious people who are like, how dare you make that go below 100? Because the way they see it is that 100 is currently giving the best chance for the movie. And now that you've done that, it, 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 it doesn't get to be considered the 100% movie. Now it's like the 99 movie, which is... Eh. But if you were to follow that same argument, then Grace saying that Borderlands is yeah. good and taking it from zero to three percent <laughs> increases the chances that Did somebody she say is that? gonna go see it. Yes, yeah. yes. And I actually Holy shit. Uh, she, she was everything she, she's right like up. a super clown, but she does have plenty of people in her audience that will, you know, go watch based on whatever she says. There are clowns who watch clowns. Exactly. <laughs> The clowns and the clowns. Well, yeah, her not argument saying. was not that it's a good movie either. Her argument was because I actually read the review she left. It was <laughs> if you like Kate Blanchett and you're a fan of Kate Blanchett, then you'll enjoy it as a Kate Blanchett movie. But I guess it could have been better if the script was tighter. That was pretty much the thrust of was her this, entire review. Yeah, but I was not criticism possible. It's getting too far into the weeds because that's what the independent critic and the independent reviewer does, right? I get you. And I, get you. I absolutely concede that proof here that a critic can have an audience, right? And that that audience can be uh, uh, swayed by the opinion of the critic, right? Like that's why they call people influencers because you influence, right? Um, that's not what I mean. I, I'm saying that the idea then, not her actual review, which is meaningless in this context, but the idea that it went from zero to 3% somehow affects it. I don't think that happens. I would concede uh, pretty happily that if you see a you know a, a movie has ten out of ten or eight out of ten or six out of ten or four out of ten, generally you might go, oh well, I guess that's not very good. I just don't think that that is the thing that's that's changing you know huge volumes of dollars. I don't think that there's when a there big are difference enough between. People, I think when there's enough reviewers who say it, it it does. Yeah, we're talking about a very large. Well, that's group what of I'm saying. If there's, there, I would accept that there's a difference between looking at a review and go, "Holy shit, it's it's got two out of ten from five hundred people." I accept that. That yes, I don't think that there's a big difference between seeing you know uh, um, fifty versus seventy. I don't think that's making a difference, and I think that most people aren't looking at these scores anyway. I don't think that this is affecting so many dollars that. You know, you can look at this and say that it, it has any any real value well, in determining. To, does the the, um, the freezing of the skull from the studio's perspective does it? Because they evidently do think it does have that value. That's why they're willing I know, to spend. I know that. Yeah, I mean, if you like, discard yeah. the fixing argument, at least like the the influencer packages, the amount of money they spend on bringing people to drum up positive publicity before the fact. The studios evidently think it does shift a significant amount of money. Otherwise, they wouldn't be spending it. Are you saying they're yeah, wrong? And they've probably or? spent a lot of money yeah. to find out if it matters too. Well, this yeah. this kind of gets into the idea of what marketing, you know, share of voice even means at that point. Is it a, a question of being, you know, Squarespace is good, or you've heard it on ten different videos? That that's a different question, right? Does that make sense? <laughs> well, if well, if ten, I don't even know where the, well, I'm, I'm. I'm forgetting yeah, where. I'm I mean, that is that is paid advertising, though. That's kind of different. Well, if, that's um, what you're arguing is that that it's the same as paid. paid well, just just to be that just to be clear, part of the budget. So with the with the Rise of Skywalker example, just to see where you are specifically, Em, you're saying, do you believe, first of all, that it was frozen? Yeah. Okay. So you do believe that... And that... I don't disagree that, 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 that people think that there might be an effect. I just don't think there is. No, no, yeah, so that's where I was going to go. Right? I was like, so the comp are, you, are you willing to accept the company did pay for that to happen, as in Disney or whoever? 
I would absolutely believe that they do, and I would believe that, that there's you... plenty of, of executives out there who believe that the the review score. You know, we we've seen people uh, with Fallout New Vegas not getting paid because they didn't get over a certain score. And I know that Bobby Kotick famously said that a you know a, a game that comes out and gets over, I think it was seventy five, is like you know thirty percent more profitable. But I just don't think that 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 actually equates to it. I think that a game that you know, or a movie that does 80 or 90% on a review is better and will get more attention and not that the review score is driving that value. Um, I, I'm just making sure that's all that the, you would tell them they shouldn't be paying for those freezes because it's pointless. Like it won't get them the return yes. they're looking for. All right. Uh, I don't, I don't think that's an unreasonable position because it's very hard for us to prove the difference, but I would probably assume that the frequency and secrecy at which they're probably trying to pull this off would imply to me they have data that proves it does make the difference. Uh, I feel it would be unlikely for them to have been doing it for this long if it made no difference. And that may be true. I, I mean, obviously, I don't have their insider information, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, right. this is just my feeling. I don't think it makes a difference. I really... Can't Batman's in there. I know, I know. <laughs> Not Winter Soldier? We'll get to it. <laughs> Well, that's because Winter Soldier is a terrible movie, but... Uh. <laughs> hey, Thor Ragnarok. Rags, how could you say something so controversial yet so brave? What do you mean? <laughs> I love Winter movie. It's great. 9387. All of these, the audience liked it, and the critics liked it. Now, now we get to the, the movies that I did not like. By far the worst is Captain Marvel, where the audience gap is a massive... 34%. 79% Rotten Tomatoes from the critics, 45% from the audience. And That's still high for the audience, I think. <laughs> uh, yeah, that is, like it's it it's too high. It should be way lower. It that should means be... one in two people enjoyed it. Yeah. That's too many. Well, I mean, if the average IQ is 100, you know, I guess. No, I, I don't know why the average IQ people would enjoy this either. Because this is yeah, the, cool, I guess. Pretty, I it's like a not particularly. I don't think it's a particularly crowd pleasing film. Really, not really. Um, and this is it's for... not that. It's, I mean, obviously, I don't find it funny, but I don't think there's anything particularly interesting or cool going on in it either. For reason, it and it's because really that movie cool blows. Things. Things. <laughs> He's right. It does blow. Wow. Oh, I would be. I, I then uh, say the f word. Jeez. I would be curious what his explanation would be for the box office. Because I mean, the general one is well, people thought Matt, yeah. they thought it was going to lead into Endgame. Yeah, but, came uh, out right after Infinity War. Thought it would lead up to Endgame. Uh, it was like it came yeah. out the perfect time for people's interest. Ant Man and the Wasp came out right after Infinity War, and that did not do as well. <laughs> Made half as much money. Hmm. <laughs> the worst the worst is they de-age Samuel L. Jackson, but he's still like 70, so every time he has to walk, it's like Robert De Niro and the Irishman. Yes. <laughs> true. <laughs> Sorry, but true. The fight scene uh Sam has, Sam Jackson has in the in, in the Captain Bob is not great. It's him and Ben Mendelssohn too, who is not a spring chicken either. It's uh and they're having to do like flips and shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. Also, yeah. <laughs> why do, why are you doing that? Like Samuel L. Jackson has been Samuel L. Jackson since he was like 30. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he, 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 there, there's no I reason. I think he would play a clip from way earlier in his career. Rather I than suppose that right? that one's funny because <laughs> he's also, aged he's up. Been Samuel but, L. Jackson. Yeah. He's also been Samuel L. Jackson his entire life. I just would like to point that out. Wow, look at you with your actuallys. <laughs> I'm with Captain Marvel as a character. Is that Captain Marvel is a terrible character? Brie Larson gives True. one of the worst performances True. in movie history. She has every power. Calm all down. So it's, it's, it's bad. <laughs> But sure. <laughs> it's, it's bad, but like, let's 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 save that reverse pedestal for, you know. You might need it for a performance in the models. Where is the suspense? Yeah. I think she was just miscast. I, I, I don't think Brie Larson. No, she was Miss Marvel. I just think she was not uh, directed uh, very well. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I love you, Rex. <laughs> oh dear! Oh dear! Mm -hmm. You, Captain Marvel, very well. That's why. Okay, I so who would you have, who would you have cast as Captain Marvel? Gina Carano. Thank you, everyone, for that. <laughs> Heck yeah. yeah! They made her. In yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I like Gina. I don't more, think she suits. The she looks more physic. I think she physically suits. I can believe the strong the pro buff kind of. We still have oh, all the problems on, though. The script Captain and the Marvel. direction is still there. You know. Yeah. yeah. Correct. Yes. But this has made me think about who would be a better casting. Me. And I, in my mind, 
the original Captain Marvel is like the Miss Marvel from the comics. And for that, you need someone like Sydney Sweeney or something like that. If you if you'd know the figure of the original, she's gonna get Marvel. cast at everything. <laughs> yeah, fucking, she, drink she always suggests. Does, so. <laughs> Incredibly boring as a character. And part of that is because if you are going to make a female superhero, then there should be something about her that actually means it's important that she's female. Yeah, like Black Widow, actually, they uh, tried to Not make necessarily. Disagree. Oh, no. Yeah, I don't no, agree. I disagree. I disagree. I, I don't think you, you... Is this the... Would he say the same thing about male superheroes? Like, always there has to be a male something related about them thing. that has yeah. to be... Yeah, I... Yeah, well, I just he might flat actually. Out don't agree. He might say that. Like, yeah, that's he really might. Cool. He might. But yeah, I just think what it's just a person thing, right? And this yeah. person is a woman. Like the big problem was they didn't really give us the foundational elements of like her motivation to be a good person. To remember, they just have the scene where her best friend says, "You are good. You are funny. You are great. You're you're the best." It was like, oh, okay, that's the same thing as you know creating reasons for values of Black Widow that are unique to women. <laughs> If again, the idea- I don't believe that people consider the strongest <laughs> elements of Black Widow's characterization in the MCU to be that she was sterilized. That's that's not at all like the parts of her, so to speak, that are, that are, that are celebrated. I would say that uh, her history with having dealt with all of her guilt would probably be, which is not unique to women or men. That's like the big thing that gives Sorry. her a lot of punch as a character. Trying to right, it's not the specific that. trauma, right? Like like what trauma you go under doesn't matter here. It's that you had the trauma and then grew from it. Well yeah, it, well, so, I'm not even sh I'm not even sure Ben would have referenced Black Widow the movie, but the editor has clearly just put that clip in there. I think you know, I, right, that's fair. I think I get what Ben is trying to say, trying to steal Manor's point a bit, is that uh Black Widow is a very feminine character in the sense that she uses her femininity in a lot of things that contextualizes who she is and what she does uh she's the femme fatale okay and that was utilized excellently in the first avengers where you know she uses a false sense of um vulnerability to lure people in give them a false sense of security and she's manipulating people through the perception of femininity and stuff like that and it and it you know complements the character as a result and maybe he's trying to identify that uh Captain Marvel seems pretty divorced of many feminine attributes. So she's a very masculine yeah, kind of character. That was my mistake. I was going from the I, clip that was used. Yeah. I don't I don't think that that's necessarily it. I think the fact that they emphasize so much in the marketing and the all the interviews and everything about Captain Marvel was they were like this is the chick movie. This is the the female superhero movie Marvel's been setting up for. And I think that was what he was actually trying to say was they gave us no reason for that to be the the one that they held on that pedestal because nothing about it, it you could have interchanged her with a man and it wouldn't have made a difference. Well, but I think that's at the same point. The, I don't think that would have been a problem had they given her character in general. The story is basically yeah. devoid of that. Had she been as interesting a hero, well, that, I mean, yeah, that, that ruins humanity. any character no matter what. Yeah, that's, that's why I think it's like a, sure. a false positive on the she needed female traits or something. It's like if she had a similarly executed origin as Doctor Strange, Ant Man, Iron Man, Captain America, anyone where an effort was put into the actual. Like core experiences and then the values that she took away from it or something as opposed to she doesn't know remember she spends the whole movie not knowing who she is and then she quote unquote like unlocks it which makes her more powerful and she just wins there's nothing really to it in terms of understanding her or what she wants to do yeah her uh, quite literally her the only thing that was stopping her was something she could have removed at any time so like yeah because th there are plenty of elements to black you wouldn't need what they did with black widow in uh, you know iron man 2 avengers a lot of people don't like to count age of ultron too much for her uh civil war is good for black widow i think as well but yeah you, you is know you she can... the only one who comes out of endgame really strong or um uh, well, I mystery everyone takes damage from the time plan obviously plan. The yeah plan. Uh, if we assume that the yeah, if we, if that's like a blanket weird writing issue more than a character issue, would she come out yeah, kind of like she's a character like, in that movie? Okay, yeah, that's what I was kind of thinking. But it's been a while since I've seen that movie, and I mm. kind of want to keep it that way. So, <laughs> is there something special about the woman doing this? Then she has to actually do some you know stereotypically female things from time to time. Okay, Captain Marvel, not good. Okay, other other ones that are not good. Uh, so the Marvels. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I mean, 
Fair. Very fair. The movie's, very fair. The movie's dog movie shit. Yeah. For exactly the same reason. No explanation necessary. <laughs> exactly the same reason. He's Absolute it. garbage. Well, he did everything I just right. said, just that again. Yeah. <laughs> Reflects that. Yeah, $206 million for a Marvel movie that probably cost $200 million to make and another $200 million to market. Giant fail for the Marvels. Thor Love and Thunder. Taika Waititi. Very fair. fair. This is a, this is a yeah. toxic movie. He has no yeah. idea oh. where to stop. Yeah. There is a problem that some directors have where they get sort of the Michael Cimino uh, syndrome, where it's like, here is the thing that brought me here. And you just gonna pause for safety. You might want to place that music for this video. Is insane. Yeah. We're so getting hit. <laughs> now I'm going to do so much of it that you want to, that is coming out your ears. I also, yeah, I completely I agree with that. There's a difference as well, because like, lots of people like make that comparison with, with Taika Waititi. Like, they'll say that like, oh, he's just doing ragnarok but more and so like it's taika waititi going to the nth degree that makes it a problem taika waititi didn't write ragnarok he did write love and thunder like this is a, a guy who yeah. is quite good at making other people's scripts funny but not very good at making the script itself make sense so it's like he is completely to blame but the problem is that they gave him all that power and influence um i don't know if his star wars trilogy is still happening <laughs> but you know I, that could be i read recently they canceled it Oh, good. Oh, thank God. Oh, good. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how accurate that is, but I read somewhere that it's like... Well, it's remember, not... most of the time, canceling a project for Lucasfilm just means never talking about it again and hoping everybody forgets that it was ever announced. Except if you're really bad, the like the Acolyte. Yeah, that's right. And the Acolyte <laughs> is a new breed of... It was so bad that they had to own that they fucked up. But yeah, I mean, he didn't care about Love and Thunder. You've seen it in the interviews, making fun of his own CG artist work as well. That was a that was a step. I got fucking octopus yeah. coming out of my fucking ears, mate. Right, he he takes all the things that that kind of make Thor Ragnarok interesting, and then he just quadruples them. He also threw his VFX artist under the bus. And oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. this is, it was just an he ugly sure moment. No one liked it. Like a press video, which. Did not go over very well. Does he look real? No, none of us. She, she something looks very off about this. this. This is my other problem: is that so many. Of it was, that's probably not even the worst part of that clip. Like they, yeah, I think yeah. at one point they say like, "Oh, this just looks terrible" or something like that. Yeah. These movies are so VFX heavy. Like that's not how you make a good movie. It isn't. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy two exactly. Whoa. Um, okay. What? Oh, yeah. Damn. <laughs> this is a, I'm a bit surprised about this one. I always find these funny because it would be like, you know that the entirety of, of Pixar movies are computer generated, right? <laughs> like, well, there's, I know yeah. it's not visual effects technically, if you want to use that term, but By it's the way, computer generated. Marvel's Captain Marvel, Love and Thunder, Guardians 2. Like, damn. Yeah, that's an interesting one. That's kind I'm of a little shocked wow. about this one because oh, I, I would say, right. yeah, I would say Guardians of the Galaxy 2 amped up the silly, which is the thing he loved about the first one. Right, yeah, but it's not an origin story. I can get that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I guess, yeah, it's not an origin Yeah, he did mention that. I forgot about that part. For the same problem, which is, it's not super horrible. That fucking music, oh, God damn it! What? No, no, oh, why is it in your know fire that if it's not horrible? Bad. Uh, oh, wow, that's just a lot of it. I just sat back down. <laughs> he said, <laughs> wait, Guardians 2 is in his top five bass, or uh, worst, sorry? Yes. 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 Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's odd. But I then he immediately said, that. it's not that bad. So. He just said it's not that bad. Oh, yeah, well, how is it, oh. If it's not that bad, why would it be beaten Quantum Mania, Multiverse of Madness? Has he even seen those? Yeah, I was I was seen oh, those. maybe he hasn't. That's a good point. Mm. This might be one of those <laughs> algorithm friendly movie uh, like videos he could make wow. that's relevant the, culturally. The curiosity, and... the curiosity will be if the only post Endgame films that are on the list are Captain Marvel and the Marvels, and if everything else is before that. You know, he didn't even have to like, watch oh, those. You went, you went and saw those. <laughs> Well, but even then, it would be like, oh, did you go and see those ones specifically, but you didn't, like, see a whole bunch of the other ones well, that came out? My point no, is that he could put them on the list, day. and he could say a bunch of disparaging things, and no one would be the wiser if he saw them or not, because well, yeah, they're just so no, awful. I think his number one, I think his number one worst is going to end up being Wakanda forever. I just think that he's... That I think that I'm now out. actually starting to think that it will actually only be, like, phase one, two, three movies. I think the Marvels and Quantum Captain Media Marvel still could turn up. Be, it could, yeah. We're done, though, with four. He's got one slot left. Maybe he has honorable mentions. <laughs> Some of these characters should have been shows. Like, Guardians of the Galaxy as, like, a weekly sitcom would be amazing. Like, what is the difference? But you in said Luke? you hated the sitcominess of, of it. You said uh, that that's what you don't is like. It, he, he doesn't mind it if that's what it is. Like, yeah, like, like it's poorly, late, poorly categorized. He doesn't want to see a sitcom in a movie. He'd rather see it as a sitcom.
I think that's what he meant. I guess. Food between Guardians of the Galaxy and Loki. Like, not much. I mean, it's kind of the same. Like, it's, it should have been a series anyway. Captain America Civil War. Oh. Ah. Mm. Ow. Oh, no. Dude, it's not, it's not even that it's ranked bad. It's that it's ranked lower than all those horrible films. <laughs> it's like, oh, damn. God. Remember, he did, he did state that. State that state 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 in, no order. Order, right? in no particular order. No, 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 no. I don't mean that. I mean, it's ranked lower than so many films he hasn't mentioned. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm, so, I'm so glad I did a pop yeah, out of the cool. chat because they're going nuts. I love it. <laughs> oh, this is pain. This is pain. Ben, yeah. you... How oh, dare you? Ow. I agree with Greta. I agree. <laughs> Drew, how dare you? I'll explain why. I'll explain why. All right. The characters make you zero sense. Oh, no. What? 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 No, the characters are the best part. He's going to say the no, thing. Ben. It's, it's always, everyone says the thing where it's like, I imagine should be fighting mm. for the individual and the cap should be fighting for the government. Zero. Zero. Okay, so here's why Captain America doesn't Wait, make any of the <laughs> 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 I like that. I like that. We need more than that. No, no, no. I think, I think he's going to explain because he just, he just said okay. this is he's about to explain why the Cap films haven't made it to the list. And it's not just because I think Chris Evans is a schmuck. What the sh? If you read the original comics of Captain America, the entire purpose of Captain America is that Captain America is John McCain. He's like a 1940s what? crotchety old man who's what? in the body of a of a 25 five year old buff dude. Right, so like he's supposed to have all the manner, and, and there's a little bit of that the in the original Captain America ever where Thor arrives. Um, well, I mean, let's see where it goes. I, I mean, there's, there's give good. me if I don't, you know, um, <laughs> he's supposed to be John McCain. as a reliable source for the comic law. <laughs> Someone like, deep faked John McCain on <laughs> Captain America. <laughs> By the way, funny. even if even if all this stuff was accurate for the comic books, I mean, this this has no power on us. As uh, what what are we radical? Um. Radical anti adaptationalists? Not anti. I would say that I'm more than happy for them. I, I feel like people would argue the spirit of Cap is absolutely intact with Cap 1, 2, to be honest, and 3. I, mean, I, I would have thought. I, I don't know. I'd have to talk to uh, Gary about it. I've, 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 not, I've always assumed. I think he likes the three Cap films, so. He's in the future, and he still has all of these, you know, kind of characteristics. I think we got a spy amongst us. A spy, right? The Jap kid. What the? I'm not spy. It's, he's Korean. And it should be oddly charming. <laughs> like Captain America should be playing and he's like holding doors for women. That's Captain funny. America immediately turns into like a soy boy. But you, what? what? In, in, what, in what way Wait, exactly? I knew it. I knew it. Isn't this a veterans meeting? Every soy boy I know tears a log yeah. in half. He's the oh, man. I would like more information. Or, oh, it's a, it's a, a, little, little it's a blip pussy. recovery meeting or whatever, right? <laughs> Fucking hell. Like, by, by the time we get to Avengers Endgame, he's attending, like, therapy sessions, right? <laughs> he's, a, he's, a, he's a war Whoa. hero. Hang on, I oh, thought he was a veteran, veteran, dude. Okay, wait. I thought he was oh, running those sessions for the other people. So he's... Cap's familiar like with the boy. nature and need of these sorts of sessions. And these are people who've lost loved ones that he's, like, counseling. I don't, I don't think... There's nothing soy about that. <laughs> Total beta energy. The whole character of him is that he's a male all the time. I mean, morning your beta, 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 beta energy. I love it. Because <laughs> Endgame is I love it. Fours. But Cap was the one who wanted to spearhead actually like going out there and fixing it. Yeah. Like he, that was his plan. He wanted to do it and Tony didn't want to do it. So like the idea that Cap was being like totally passive or anything, that's not even true. He wanted to do something about it. That was kind of like the point of the scene was, oh, you got to move on. But he hasn't. Like, he hasn't moved on, clearly. It's like, he's still obsessed with trying to figure yeah. out if there's, like, some sort of way to fix That's it. That's one of the good scenes so, in Endgame. <laughs> yeah, like, Endgame's not even a good movie, but, like, like come on. Oh, Man, man like, we were... Like, we were worried that there weren't going to be any hot takes in this video. We got, well, we got that... Oh, was it Rags said yeah. two surprises? Oh, we got the double right at the end. Uh. This is like yeah, a guttural level. Boy, he's so never been pissed off never about his take on the therapy. The, the, the whole thing, the whole take on therapy, it's so, like, it, oh, it, it just, yeah, it's yeah, cringe. This idea that it, like, therapy is yeah. weakness or therapy is for sissies yeah. or it's a, yeah. You know, Look, I, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll tell a little story. I mean, I'll, I'll, oh, I'll sum it up real quick. You know, when I was a teenager, my father died. I went to therapy for it and I, I, this is just pissing me uh, off. Pussy. It's, it's, yeah, so like he got a lot of estrogen. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty fucking yeah. and energy there. Yeah, that's pretty cringe, bro. All yeah, of I'm that sorry. is. Uh, everything you're saying is valid. 
But at the same time, I don't think Cap isn't is attending that for his own therapy. He's attending that to help other people out. It's like he's running it and helping. Oh, that's even worse. <laughs> helping people. Very helping people. Yeah. Energy. Like, I, I was, I, yeah, I, that was just run why it was like maybe, this is I, the only person who has ever experienced anything like what everyone in the post endgame is experiencing. He's lost yeah. his whole world before. Like he's the only person who could be running those sessions. I completely like I'm I can buy into the idea that there was more space to play up the culture shock of being dragged from the 40s to the present day. Though I think like they did actually include that relatively frequently for his character certainly like all the way through the first Avengers film. Half the jokes were about that. Uh, like his un like failure to understand electricity, um the the invocation of the like, old-fashioned values which is the reason for his character design, the suit design being what it is. Like that they do make use of that. There might have been room to do more of it, but the idea that he just becomes beta modern cuck soy boy <laughs> is absurd. <laughs> Do you yeah. say beta? Beta. Yes. Why? Well, look, he you has a refined accent because he, he speaks <laughs> proper English. He speaks proper English and is better than us. So we have a question. <laughs> Everyone. Yeah. Hey. Like at a certain point, the character has to evolve past that, though. You can't just have him be. If he's living in this, the current day for X number of years, he's going to adjust eventually. It's going to take a while. You can't just continue to have him be like, what is computer? Like, it doesn't. Uh, Gary's in the chat and he just said John McQuay John McKay with a question mark. So <laughs> yeah, John McClain is different. Yeah. McClain, McClain. I don't know. I don't know. We would have him on, but I think we've only got a minute left of this video and that's when our first break's gonna happen, so it's kinda awkward timing. Um we might try to maybe try to get him in the morning, because I know he's gotta go to sleep soon. You Americans going to going to bed early, which is also soy, by the way. Like bed is soy. Like a bunch of early to bed, early to rise makes a man soyful, um, <laughs> cucky, soyful. and soyful. Uh, a woman. So there, <laughs> soyful and a woman. Appears <laughs> in his character. There's also another big problem with that, and it's, it's true even in the comics. Captain America should be the one on the side of the American government. And is, Robert yeah. Downey Jr.'s Iron Man should be the person who opposes it. Someone's going to have to explain um, to me why they ideologically yeah, support What did we explain to you? They had a whole bunch of movies about it, yeah. Of course, movies happen. The characters come on didn't develop at all. Pringy, Pringy. I think, I think you're forgetting the important element of this argument, which is that Captain America has the word America in his name. So yeah, but like, why would I mean, that even? Yeah. I don't even like, in your bank I, and smoke the thing it. is, I'm not even like interested in even entertaining the idea of like, well, yeah, well, that means that he ought to always be like pro institutions always. Like, but but I mean, there's a whole bunch of movies that had them on the arcs that essentially got them to opposing sides. So there's nothing to explain. You just got to watch the movies. You just got to watch the movies that lead up to it. Well, he he praised Iron Man for his big, strong libertarian energy, and now once you well, have why, a Captain America, that's. But it's just like the whole shame, point of the arc. I, like, that's how his character works. He says like they don't make remember. enough of he the, the man out of time thing. But like the whole point of that arc is that because he remembers the past, unlike the present day people who do not remember the past and so are doomed to repeat it, he can see the pitfalls of going in for surveillance states and totalitarian ideologies. Like that's doing everything that Shapiro says that they don't do with his character. So he's evidently not paying attention. It's not the only time. It's a, uh, Civil War wasn't the only storyline where Captain America historically went against the government. He did it a lot. Whenever he felt that the government, yeah, but would well, John I'm not even talking about the movies. I'm, I'm talking about comic storylines. I'm talking about all, like everything. One of the 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 key things is that a lot of the time in his arcs is when the government is going against what he because he's supposed to embody the American persona, not the government. Yeah. Freedom. So whenever they go, yeah, free, yeah, and um, whenever they go against that, he feels they're going against that. He's it's he always finds it to be specifically, uh, you know, Steve Rogers, Captain America in this instance is supposed to go against that. That's part of the whole reason he exists as a hero. In uh, in the first movie, he gets told they can't rescue those uh, the guys that end up being like the Howling Commandos, right? But he goes and gets them anyway. Well, yeah, because he wasn't actually meant to be in the military. Yeah. He was just going around doing uh, performances. But then yeah, he, he decided was just a to USL do that performer. That's all. Mm -hmm. and, and and it's just and and then of course you're ignoring that the Bucky element of the story is also going to be feeding into the decisions that he makes as well. Like you can't ignore that either. It's just yeah, it's just wrong.
places. Iron Man, Silly. 2008. Robert Downey Jr. is. I will not give over yeah, to you. No way. That was, that was several big ago. stories <laughs> after that. Ago. Much, much earlier. Did he see Age of Ultron? Happened. That was Tony. <laughs> you gotta remember I that. I can believe he hasn't seen it. Probably. No how. Not happening. Or he doesn't By remember. By the time he gets to Civil War, he's like, we should all register with the government. Because I'm a good little vax. No. 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 Oh, wow. wow. Has yes. been registered with the that was almost government. the best stop of all time. You stopped <laughs> mid him saying vaxer. That was well, so but, great. Because he, because what he said, <laughs> a good little. It's like no, he just he, he subverts the shit out of the government in that movie. He's just trying to avoid yep. the worst case scenario, which is everyone going to fucking prison. Is that how you see this? This is protection. Iron Man is precisely the wrong person to do that. Tony Stark is like, leave me the f alone. Why did you get the music so loud? Stop. Why? <laughs> Bring it down. Loud. Why are you covering up your bad opinion? I have a, I have a, <laughs> my own island and, and a bunch of Bitcoin. And Chris Evans is the one. Who Just gotta pause again. I, I, I like his stance of Iron Man is anti-surveillance. The guy who builds, I don't know, satellites that have, you know, his suits that can fly automatically like, to, well, he's, to he's can fly automatically to problems. So therefore, would require some form of surveillance to do. But like, what's he even saying? Like, oh, he's on his island. What do you mean? He Avengers. He's part of a team. He's, he's one of the, the founding team. members he, of the he, Avengers. He the damn the thing. thing. Yeah. Like, he pays that, for it. He's thinking. But he already minimized him down to he flies around a lot, right? Like, yeah. Somebody in the him. someone in the chat said he built Ultron based on this entire concept of yeah. of what he's saying he doesn't do. That's a great whoever that was. A, that was a good a yeah. good point. It's just funny. Ben is skipping all the character progression in between and just saying it's a complete contradiction yeah i mean if you watch yeah. iron man and then civil war it will be weird <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. I, honestly i bet that's what he did i literally, feel like that's exactly what he did early was created yeah. by the american government and then he's like no 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 i'm not going to turn over my identity to the american government so I, that was actually that was he my... was he was he was well, not it's, not, it's nowhere near that simple it's a weird yeah, framing. It's, a it's making it sound like he's a robot for the government, which is not at all the, the how it works. Mm -hmm. Big ideological right. problem. Well, Wait. folks, those are uh, my rankings. That, well, there you oh, go. Leave your hatred <laughs> right. in the comments. Thanks, we'll see you next time. All right, there's there's a lot of in the, in the, in the, That was, here's that was very thing. enlightening. Like, and you're I, a silly goose. <laughs> you're a silly goose. Like, I, here's the thing. I like Ben, all right? I'm coming out. I like Ben. But I'm coming the take out. He had there come out. He won't like you, I know. I know, right? I don't. Um, I fucking hate but him. But the take, the take <laughs> he had then, right, is, I, I, like, honestly, if I said something that uninformed about, you know, the progression of Tony Stark and Captain America, I would feel embarrassed. He's uh, just a normie. He's he just won't a normie. Care. Average yeah. moviegoer guy. He doesn't remember most of the movies or ch big chunks of the movies that he does. He just, it just... It fleets away from his memory after all these years, and this is probably a video that was made not, probably not because they're super passionate about it, but because, you know, we're a big channel, we're conservatives, and da-da-da, we should probably, you know, we need to be dipping our toes and well, wading into the cultural stuff well, this to make our... Out, so let's do a Marvel video so that we can do that, and hey, maybe they'll stick around for the politics And to something. be fair, there's nothing stopping anybody from sharing some movie opinions, and you can do that. He knows how to do that. True. Yeah. Political, well, I, uh, well, political YouTubers the, famously have great movie opinions. Yes, I suppose that's do. the funny thing, is that a lot of it was just pretty boring. Like, a lot of them were the expected... No like, they weren't explained yeah. well, but a lot of them were just, like, the most normy things. Yeah, Guardians, good. Yeah, Iron Man, good. True. Very yeah, normal. Captain Marvel bad. Very normal, agreeable perspectives.